good evening friends and welcome to this session on thank you and sorry two very powerful words you know we uh, most of the times before till the time i realized their power i would normally say thank you to people or say sorry to people without realizing how transformative these words are uh, when they are spoken uh, from the heart and you know we mean them so that is what this session is a little bit about the journey you know that i have been on the path of and i'll be co-hosting this session along with uh, amrita uh, who is joining me from dubai and uh, she is uh, you know not feeling very well but she is still made sure that she joins us for the session today so thank you amrita and welcome to the session welcome everybody thank you ashish my pleasure i'm really happy to be here with all of you yeah. these are very tough times that we are going through unprecedented times and the research shows that one of the the number one reason why people are stressed uh, these days is because of a sense of overwhelm you know having to do too much in too less a time is stressing people out the number two cause of stress is relationships whether it is relationships at home um you know with spouse or with parents or siblings or children even or at work whether it is with your peers with your boss with your customers these are you know relationships overall is the number two cause of stress the number three cause of stress is the finances you know so a lot of businesses have been impacted you know the, either the sales are down or the businesses have had to close down completely and this many businesses are facing bankruptcies so all of this has collectively put it a uh, lot of stress on the people and uh, it is manifesting uh, in physical uh, pain uh, in you know aches uh, aches here and there and uh, not being able to sleep you know so that these are the kind of challenges we are having and one of the things which has emerged is the trust deficit is at a record high you know so the employers are not able to trust employees that uh, uh, you know they are thinking employer is thinking that the employee is taking it easy while being at home and a lot of employees i speak to they say that you know we are working longer than ever but you know balancing multiple priorities you know we are not just as productive at we as we used to be so these are the different challenges that we are facing is there any other challenge that you think uh, people are facing but we have not covered here we'll be happy to hear about any of the challenges any other challenge that you think people are facing in the current times but has not been covered here yeah i think ashish hi good evening hi. everyone this is partho hi partho uh, i personally feel that staying at home and not being able to go out Yeah. and uh, uh, you know for living the normal life that has also impacted people uh, yeah. putting on people putting on weight people getting sad people apart from the financials and whatever you mentioned i think that's a uh, yeah. impact that uh, it is having on the lives of people yeah very well said partho the sense of being trapped you know uh, is uh, is bothering a lot of people you can't move out you know and you're locked within the, the four walls of your house and this these are uh, challenges in uh, many situations many cities like particularly like bombay where the houses tend to be smaller uh, you know and then you know everybody is there uh, working together uh, all the time so that that very well said uh, partho completely agree with you and uh, friends with that we will move on you know i would like to ask you a couple of questions you know and please type yes if you agree with these statements if you wish you could handle stress better please type why if you feel you can handle stress better i wish i could cut down on my negative emotions i wish i could have better control over my reactions i wish i had more time one yes for each statement please you know the responses are slower than what we would like them to be so please type i wish i had more time i wish i could sleep better you know could have restful sleep or peaceful sleep i wish i had fewer moments of self doubt i wish i could be happier and friends would you believe me if i were to say that answer to all these challenges and answer to all this wishes 
is in two phrases or rather if i may say okay two phrases thank you and sorry you know these are the two phrases which can help uh, solve these problems and this is not what i am saying this is what the research of dr robert emmons from university of california davis uh, who is he has been researching on gratitude on thanks you know he's written a book called thank you and he says that you know when people who practice gratitude have stronger immune systems they're not as bothered by aches and pains they have lower blood pressure they are better equipped to take care of their health and they uh, sleep longer and feel more refreshed when they wake up and it's not only limited the benefits are not only limited to uh, physical health but also psychological health higher levels of positive emotions they feel more alert alive awake Uh, more joyful optimistic happiness uh, happy pleasure and the benefits continue to in the social arena they are helpful generous compassionate forgiving lonely and isolated and you know uh, these are very important for uh, the lead people who are in leadership roles also and i think in times like this each one of us is having a leadership role it's not a titular thing you know the only the ceo or cxo is a leader everyone is a leader whether you're leading yourself or a family or a community you know you have a leadership role and when you are happy uh, when you are uh, you know healthy uh and you are able to reach out to people connect with people you know we can contribute to raising the overall uh sense of well-being for everybody who is around us so gratitude uh, is proven uh, to have benefits at multiple levels but it is not only research you know of one researcher in one university in america that we are relying on there are other people you know the business leaders who are saying that gratitude works and uh, you know ariana huffington uh, uh, anthony robbins oprah winfrey use gratitude as a strategy for success any anthony robbins fans here please type ar uh, if you are a anthony robbins fans or if you are a oprah winfrey fan please type ow if you are both if you adore both of them please type both uh, you know let's see some responses coming there if you follow oprah winfrey or anthony robbins I'm particularly impressed with the journey of uh, Oprah Winfrey. Uh, for those of you who uh, may not know uh, her story so well, I'll take a couple of uh, minutes to share. She was born to an unwed mother on a farm in rural America, and uh, from such uh, abject uh, poverty, she has uh, risen to become one of the most successful. at uh, producers in america and a billionaire she is a self made billionaire who and her net worth is about 3 billion dollars which is uh, uh, you know about 20000 crores and uh, she practices gratitude you know you can go and research on uh, how much she practices gratitude she used to write a gratitude journal uh, every day for over 16 years Uh, and she has talked about it on videos she has written about it you know so there are, and she's a self made billionaire so from a rural uh, farm in america to becoming a self made billionaire is a huge success story and she is uh, regularly used gratitude and you know one of the people who uh, 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 asked her this question you know uh, opra this is uh, very good uh, for you you know it's very easy for you to be grateful uh, because uh, you have got everything you know so it's very easy for you to be grateful and she gave a very beautiful answer she said it's not because i have everything i am grateful but it is because i am grateful i have got everything so gratitude really makes a difference friends i saw only two responses of people who like opra who like opra winfrey out of 17 that we are here is are there only two people who like opra winfrey and uh, tony robbins uh, so ruchi has also responded thank you uh, can we have some show here can we can if you like anthony robbins you can type ar or tony robbins tr or if you like oprah winfrey and if you don't know much about oprah winfrey then maybe you should uh, you know you can do some research on oprah winfrey and see what her success story is and it is not only business leaders it is not only the university research which says that gratitude is works it is ingrained in parts of many cultures so bible you know has this passage which says that whoever has will be given more and will have abundance and whoever does not have even what he has 
will be taken away from him. When I read this for the first time, it appeared very cruel to me. It is like haves will have uh, more and those who don't have, you know, will get poorer. But when I inserted one word and I read this passage again, whoever has gratitude will be given more and he or she will have abundance. And whoever does not have gratitude, even what he or she has, will be taken away from her. So now this uh, passage made so much of sense to me. And I realized that how, uh, you know, gratitude is a part of our culture. And it's not only in Christianity, uh, in, even in Arabic, you know, people say shukran and they really be believe it and they really feel uh, thankful to people. Um, in Hindi, we say dhanya ho. In some other uh, languages, we say shukra hai. And even the ancient Hawaiian practice of ho pono pono has gratitude as a key part of it. And it is when I was researching about ho pono pono, when I was studying about ho pono pono, I I came across the second uh, very powerful and transformative energy, which is saying sorry. So Hoponopono, for your benefit, I'll just share with you as got two parts, gratitude, which says, thank you, I love you. And then uh, the second part of it is saying sorry, uh, please forgive me. You know, I'm sorry, please forgive me. So those are the two parts. I'll focus on the gratitude part and then, you know, I'll request Amrita to talk more about forgiveness because they're equally powerful and transformative energies. And they have been as a part of our culture for thousands of years. So there is university research which says gratitude and sorry works. There are billionaires who are saying it and it's a part of our culture. Do you need more proof or shall we, shall we move on? If, if you are okay with moving on, please type BIO, bring it on in the chat box. If you're, Anuradha says, bring it on. Thank you. Thank you, Ruchi. Partho, thank you. Samir, thank you. Rupa, thank you. Kanika, thank you. Kavana, thank you. Thank you. So we'll move on, move on. So that, that's enough proof that gratitude works. Ashish, you become mute. You need to unmute yourself. Thanks for pointing that out. Yeah. And uh, some of you uh, have joined us for the first time. So I'll take a couple of minutes to introduce Mindful Living to you. I started Mindful Living uh, in 2018 and in the, with an objective of reaching out to 1 million people and helping them uh, lead uh, healthier, happier and uh, richer lives. And we, in the last two years, we have conducted uh, over 150 sessions for employees in the corporate sector, which include the who's who of corporate India, Tata Group, Aditya Birla Group, Group, CII, IBM, Kotak Life, Airbnb, American Express, CXL, and many other organizations. So, and uh, the, some ground rules before we start, please keep a notepad and pen handy for taking down your questions. We will have two Q&A uh, sections. Uh, one, uh, when we finish gratitude, and uh, which will be a shorter Q&A section and the uh, a longer one, uh, which is when uh, Amrita finishes speaking about forgiveness. Uh, ideally, uh, you know, log in through your laptop and desktop and keep your mobile phone switched off or on silent mode so you're not disturbed. And don't believe whatever we are saying till you research it and better uh, till you practice it, you know, some of the things may look like too good to be true, but uh, uh, rather than reject them, you know, try them out and see whether they're working for you and then only believe them. And uh, please ensure that you're not disturbed for next uh, 60 odd minutes or 45 to 50 minutes uh, in the session. So the coming to gratitude, you know, it is based on the universal laws, you know, universal laws of physics. And uh, I would like to particularly refer to the third law of the Isaac Newton, which says that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. And when we apply that law of, uh, you know, the law of motion to uh, gratitude, you know, it, translate, it translates into uh, this in this way, that every action of giving thanks always causes an opposite reaction of receiving. And what we receive is equal to the amount of gratitude we give. Every action of gratitude sets off an action of receiving. The more gratitude we give, the more we receive. 
this is a law you know every action has an equal and opposite reaction that we have been studying from the school you know but we have never really applied to it and it works with precision you know so uh, this is something which is tried and tested and there is another thing that i would like to uh, talk about uh, another law of nature which is uh, you reap what you sow <laughs> so gratitude is also rooted in this uh, law of nature and when we and it's uh, to explain it very very simply if i were to sow the seed of a mango tree uh, i'll get a mango tree right if i were to sow the seed of a bitter god i would get the bitter god as a fruit so what we need to understand is the soil the water the air that is available to both the seeds is the same then what causes the difference in the outcome how come in one case we get juicy delicious mangoes and in another case we get kadwa karela you know so what is it you know the environment is say sometimes we uh, you know i hear people saying the environment is so negative but in the same environment in which the same polluted air same water same soil is available you have bitter god and you have juicy delicious mango so let us we understand that when it comes to uh, nature when it comes to trees because we can see them physically it is not so obvious at times when it comes to the uh, to our own thoughts to observing our own thoughts and without realizing you know we are sowing uh, negative seeds like i don't like my job i don't have enough money i can't find a perfect partner i can't my pay my bills i don't get along with my parents my child is a problem my life is in a mess my marriage is in a trouble i work very hard but my finances never improve you know so this is the uh, uh, see you know sometimes when i talk about uh, karela people uh, confuse karela with the health benefits it's got but i'm not talking about the health benefits it's just the taste of karela so if we are sowing bitter seeds you know we will get bitter outcomes there are no two ways about it. so it becomes very important for us to understand what are the seeds that i am sowing in my mind but if i change the seed of thought and think that i love my job my family is very supportive i had my i had a best vacation i feel amazing you know you will see that the outer world transforms in line with the change in the thoughts that you are sowing and once uh, the and it is in the exact proportion of the gratitude you know when you start showing gratitude for the money you have got for the family you have got for the job you have got for the boss you have got or for whatever is there you know you when you start showing gratitude it will attract more and more uh, good in your life you know and you will have accelerated success in your career uh, job business whatever else just to reiterate uh, we uh, first need to uh, give to receive and this is where i find lot of people uh, uh, get stuck you know like the question which was asked to oprah uh, it's very easy to be grateful you know because people think that once you receive you can be grateful but the thing is you have to first cause the action you know the action is important so first give gratitude to be become uh, a patr to receive uh, you know the goodies in life so first give gratitude second deliberately think and say the magic words and not only think it is but better than thinking is you feel it you know uh, you know because it's a uh, gratitude is a energy has a heart energy and when you feel gratitude you know it really really uh, magnifies a, its power yeah that's what the next point is is the force of the feeling and uh, the change in the life is uh, amount equal to the amount of gratitude we pay and one of the reasons i like gratitude is because uh, of the way it Uh, uh, shifts the uh, energy to a higher plane you know i live on a uh, on the 12th floor in the building where i live and uh, uh, as a part of my morning exercise i climb uh, 12 floors you know uh, but uh, some uh, during the day i take lift and in lift i can instantly get up uh, to the 12th floor and the gratitude is that lift which will immediately take you up because once we are grateful it is not possible for us to be shameful or guilty or angry you know you can't be angry and grateful 
you can't be fearful and grateful you can't be sad and grateful once you are grateful you just move up and you operate from very high energy levels which are love peace joy you know that is the power of gratitude and that's why it's love i love it another reason i love gratitude is because it's very simple uh and it is got highest roti which is return on time invested you invest little bit of time but the bounty that you will receive is immense so it's simple uh, it's transformational uh, no side effects no negative effects uh, and you know so you can just start practicing gratitude and benefit from it i know some of you already do but this session is to uh, you know just take that understanding a little bit forward and uh, you know i'll talk about briefly about uh, the uh, benefit of gratitude in three areas in our life uh, one is uh, money uh, second is health and then relationships and then i'll hand it over to uh, amrita uh, and in terms of money you know a lot of people are uh, very worried about the, the uh, because of the uncertain situation that is there many people have lost jobs those who are in jobs they have had salary cuts uh, you know and uh, many people are using uh, borrowed money to finance their life so there are a lot of challenges and in such a situation uh, it becomes uh, very difficult to feel grateful for the money uh, that you have you know many people are feeling that uh, uh, you know i don't have enough or what will happen but the minute we uh, show uh, concern about money you know that is being ungrateful to the money that we have got so it's very important for us to feel first feel grateful for the money we have got and once we have got uh, once we have got gratitude for the money you will find that uh, you know it starts increasing more and more and sometimes i get asked this question you know when i talk about gratitude for money or gratitude for the position that, that we have will this not make me less ambitious you know if i am grateful for what i have got uh, then you know i'll not strive for more no but that is not a fact you know we have uh, been conditioned to believe that only uh, if uh, we feel dissatisfied uh, can we grow but that's not necessarily true you can be satisfied and you can grow uh, and don't believe because i am saying this try and then you know believe it and that's a much better space to operate out of that you are satisfied with what you have got and you are striving for more that that works beautifully and the reason i have showed this book is uh, because uh, ken honda uh, is a very renowned author in uh, japan and his books have sold more than 50 million copies and for this particular book uh, he researched uh, 12000 millionaires and you know the story the i'll share the story briefly he goes and meets a, a millionaire who has just become a millionaire and the millionaire say he asked him you know he can th- thought this this guy would be very happy because he's just become a millionaire which is dream for hundreds and thousands of people and uh, the billionaire said no i have just got a million what is there in a million you know but i would be happy if i get 10 millions so next uh, in couple of days uh, ken happens to meet a 10 a person who's got 10 millions and that guy so he asked ken you know ken thought that this guy must be happy because he's got 10 millions and uh, that guy said no what's there in 10 million i don't have a private jet you know i would be happy if i have got a private jet and uh, so this guy is also not happy and secure about the money that he has got then the, 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 the he met a person who's got 30 million dollars and he's got a private jet so can thought this must be a guy who must be really happy and uh, uh, he asked him are you happy you've got 30 million dollars you've got a private jet no i've got such a small jet it can only seat six people how can i be happy so then can realize that you know the prosperity or abundance or uh, uh, feeling of gratitude does not is not linked to the amount of money you have got in your bank it is li- it's a feeling it's your feeling rich is not linked to the b- bank balance you know it is a state of mind and you can be happy irrespective of the amount of the money you have got uh, two days back i was listening to an interview of a person who owns a bank you know a very large bank Bank, not a small bank and you know he was saying that i am every night when i go to sleep uh, you know when i get up in the morning 
I'm not sure whether I'll have my bank or not. You know, he was referring to a particular point, which is about how technology is changing banking, you know, and he was fearing that, you know, the technology will take up, take up his bank or the technology, there will be a cyber attack and the money of all the uh, depositors. So uh, you could be an owner of a bank, but still be worried about money. You could still be worried about uh, losing money or you could be, uh, you know, a millionaire or 30 million. You could be worried about money or you could be grateful about money. So take your choice today, you know, whether you want to be grateful for what you have and see the money grow or constantly live in a uh, sense of dissatisfaction and threat, whether you are a $30 million or a billionaire, you can always be feeling lack, you know, so that my two bits on this point. The next one, this I have spoken about earlier. The next one is about health <laughs> and health is the real wealth. And we, uh, we have got about 50 trillion cells in our body which are perf uh, working in uh, tandem with each other, you know, and they, uh, they help me speak, they, they help you listen, they help, you know, you can see me, I can see you. There is so much that happens, but we rarely stop uh, to pay gratitude to things that are going right. But we, if we have got a small cut, small nick here and there, you know, small pain, then you, you feel that the world has come to an end. But when things are going right, we don't take, uh, you know, even a minute to pay gratitude uh, to whatever is going right in our body. So I would urge you to take some time out and be grateful to the eyes that help us see uh, the beauty uh, which is there in this world. Uh, you know, take a minute to acknowledge the ears, you know, which help us uh, hear the beautiful sounds. And, you know, Amrita sounds much better than I do. So you will really be able to appreciate that. And the next uh, next uh, Saturday, we are going to have a session on sound therapy. So you will realize how powerful sound is, you know, uh, as a medium. So, you know, if you don't have ears, how can you enjoy sound therapy session how can you enjoy uh, listening to uh, amrita's voice so miracle of ears miracle of nose which helps us uh, uh, you know have uh, uh, smell all the beautiful fragrances the taste of the food half of it comes from the smell so if we don't have a, a sense of smell our uh, you know we'll not be able to lose the taste so like that there are many things i can keep going on but the, the point the mood point is be grateful for what we have got health is the real wealth uh, and you know look at this gentleman Nick Wojcik. Uh, he's an amazing, amazing guy and no limbs, but he is living his life full on. And, you know, I meet so many people who have got everything, you know, perfect health, but they are, you know, like, I am at the gaya, mera dab kya hoga, barbad ho gaya, you know, and this guy, has, he plays golf, he plays cricket, he swims, he dives. What is it that he doesn't do? He's doing skating in this world. What about skating, you know? So live life, you know, if we decide, uh, if we can set, uh, and uh, he didn't have it easy. I can tell you, you know, when you listen to his videos, uh, he was at a point of time, he was so bullied in his life that he was wanting to commit suicide. Know? So from that stage to come to this stage where he's got a, uh, he's a millionaire and got a dream lifestyle. He owns two companies, many fancy cars, dream lifestyle, you know, so uh, uh, people can do if you've got the right mindset, if you're grateful, then you can achieve magic. And the third one, which is very, very important is relationships, you know, uh, without uh, relationships life loses its meaning you know imagine if we are the only person on the earth what would life mean like so there is small uh, exercise which i would like to share and maybe i'll just uh, close with this is take some time out not now but uh, you know after the session is over or whenever you have time choose three of the people choose three people who are you are really grateful to who have played a big uh, role uh, in your life, uh, you know, uh, it, it could be friends, it could be family, it could be colleagues at work who have transformed, given a dimension to your life, transformed your life and say that, say thank you, you know, say thank you, name of the person and for what, you know, and uh, if you can have a photo of the person in front of them or imagine that you're talking to them and say thank you. And when you thank, you know, so the person need not be in front of you. You know, it's ideal if you can call the person and say thank you, or if you can write to the person and say thank you. But even if you can't call, uh, you know, if the person is not in a physical state and you still want to thank the person, you know, just remembering them, uh, imagining them and saying thank you is good enough. You know, in the world of energy, your thoughts 
reach the person for whom they are intended to. So with that, uh, friends, I'll uh, like to uh, kind of uh, bring this to a close. Just one thing I would like to share. The gratitude is like a snowball. It starts small, you know. So sometimes uh, don't get frustrated, you know, if you're saying thank you, thank you, and it doesn't happen. Oh, the, what Ashish was saying was all bogus, you know. Uh, it doesn't work. Wait, wait, be patient with it. La continue to say thank you. Continue to feel uh, gratitude and you will see over a period of time, uh, you know, it, it will become this big snowball and it will have a big, big uh, impact in your life. So the, with that, friends, I'll uh, kind of pause here to see if you have any questions or comments uh, and then I'll invite Amrita to talk about forgiveness. Thank you, Shashank. Thank you, Ruchi. Friends, if you uh, if you have liked uh, whatever I have shared with you, you can make a smiley and let me know this was worth your time. Uh, uh, or you can use your emojis in that bar and say, you know, clap, clap, clap or whatever, whatever. Thank you. Thank you, Atul, sir. Uh, so whatever, just let, let us know if this makes sense to you. Thank you, Rupa. Uh, thank you, Bishna. Thank you, Shashank. <laughs> thank you, Vidya Shankar. Thank you, Shashank. Thank you, Anuradha. Thank you, Indrani. Thank you, Ruchi. So the thanks, friends. I think uh, uh, I did a decent job. I'm grateful to you for taking out time on a Saturday evening and joining us. And uh, I'm also grateful to Amrita to be able to, who's conducting this session, you know, when she's really, uh, you know, having high fever. So over to you, Amrita. And uh, uh, if I may say, I'm sorry to have bothered you to invite and come and speak uh, on this session when you're not feeling well. Not at all. I, all I have to say is thank you, Ashish. <laughs> thank you so much. And I have to say, uh, it was very insightful. I mean, gratitude is something I've been dabbling with for a long time. Yet, uh, you brought in, uh, you know, to the forefront, some pointers, some little very simple tips and tools, some simple ways of taking your attention to certain things, which to me personally was uh, very, very helpful. So really, thank you. Thank you. And I'm saying this to you <laughs> also in my mind. So great. Thank you so much, Ashish. So let's move on to uh, forgiveness. And, uh, you know, forgiveness is something, again, I have heard about it for a very long time. And usually, uh, many years ago, when people would talk about it's important to forgive and forgiveness and all that, I would say, yeah, I, I know we are supposed to forgive. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I don't always like it, but I get it. So uh, this is something I'll admit I have felt like that about forgiveness. What is the big deal? What is such a big deal about forgiving? Because sometimes some things happen between us and somebody or some set of people, and it's quite easy to just kind of forget and move on. But some other times, depending on the you know, intensity of the episode, whatever it was, or the intensity to which it impacted us, we kind of struggle with it. So today, uh, what I want to do is I want this, uh, this whole discussion to be experiential for everybody. I don't want to be just sitting and talking and all of you listening, because I honestly want to even know some things from you all. So uh, if you want to make it interactive, there is one request I have for all of you, if you all would maybe close your eyes or not, but just in your mind, think of one person that you feel you have not been able to fully forgive so far. Just think of any one person, maybe somebody who betrayed you or cheated you, somebody who hurt you very bad, maybe somebody who neglected you, someone who lied to you, or maybe someone was plain mean with you, you know? So just think of any, any such person. Everybody must come up with at least one person in their minds. It would become easier to apply all the tools that we talk about. It would become more interactive for us. And if somebody out there is thinking that, oh, I can't think of anybody to forgive, I would like to bring your attention to one question. Have you forgiven your own self? There are times when we say that, oh my God, how could I even think like that? How could I even do this? How could I not even see this coming? I made such a horrible mistake. You know, sometimes we are very harsh on our own self. So have you forgiven yourself? Maybe you're the person you need to forgive. So whoever it is, I need everybody to have one person in their mind, okay? So I think I need to uh, start sharing my screen. So what is this whole big deal about forgiving? 
why is it that we all need to forgive? Why people say that it is, uh, you know, of great importance that we uh, forgive whoever we have not been able to forgive. So now I came across a couple of quotes that are really close to my heart and I thought of sharing with you guys. Uh, forgive others not because they deserve forgiveness, but because you deserve peace. Isn't that true? We all deserve to live peacefully. We all deserve that calmness within. We all deserve the harmony. So because we deserve the peace, let's take on forgiveness as something on our to-do list. And the other one is also a huge favorite of mine. Forgiveness isn't approving what happened. It's choosing to rise above it by Robin Sharma. This is amazing. Forgiveness isn't, it, let's not mistake it that we are approving and we are saying that whatever somebody did or the way somebody behaved uh, was the right thing to do. But no, I'm choosing to just rise above it. Why? Because I deserve the peace. Now, Ashish already mentioned something about him living on the 12th floor and that when he was talking about it, I remembered something very beautiful. Now, this was my experience in Chennai. And uh, I happened to visit a mall there, which is in a very, very crowded place, very, very crowded, surrounded by a lot of people. So when you approach and when you enter the mall, there is a lot of pollution, there is a lot of noise, I mean, sea of people all around. But I was meeting with somebody on the top floor of that mall at a restaurant, which has French windows all over. So you can see through the glass, everything. But what hit me real hard I walked in through all that mirth and the mire and the dust and the noise and everything. But once I walked up to that restaurant and I settled down and looked down from there, that same pollution, the same crowd and everything looked so peaceful. It was so calming. I was not feeling the fumes and the noise and the pollution. So there was a beauty in rising above all the muck and mess and going right to the top. The view from anywhere high up, the people pay such a lot of money to get a view from, like I live in Dubai, at the top, at the Burj Khalifa, people pay a lot of money to go there. Why? To just get that view from the top. So it's all about choosing to rise above it, right? Now, I, here is a question for all of you, and please feel free either to unmute yourself and answer, or you could even chat. My question to you is, what does holding on feel like? So when you're holding on to something you haven't been able to release, what does it feel like? What are the emotions that come up? How do you feel That's about it? I would like you to share. It is stressful. Mm -hmm. it Anger. Is stressful. Anger, yes, yes. It is resentment. Resentment, very good, yes. Resentment, that is the word. Yes. A lot of heaviness inside. A lot of heaviness inside. We feel bogged down by it. True, true, absolutely. A lot of hurt and self-pity. Hurt and self-pity. Yes, brilliant. Brilliant, shares. Yep. Anything else? So, yeah, I mean, I think you, you all summed it up. You used all the key words that actually come up for, I think it's common to all of us. It's feeling of hurt, feeling of anger, resentment, pain. These are the things we feel. So let's keep in mind what it is to hold on so that we can appreciate what it is to release. Let's say if Ashish tells me, Amrita, please lift your water bottle. I, I can lift it up. It's not a very big water bottle. I can lift it up with one hand. It's filled with water till here. So it's fine for me. But what if he tells me, okay, fine, you can lift it up. You're holding it. Keep it like that and keep it like that till the time you go to bed tonight, which is so many hours from now. So what is going to happen? All those things you started talking about, there's going to be pain holding this. It's going to be annoying. It's going to be irritating. It's going to change the way I'm feeling about holding this bottle. So I guess that's what holding on feels like. And from your responses, I gather that we are all on the same page. That's exactly what it looks like. So when something happens, they say that don't suppress your emotion. Otherwise, you will burst. We hear that a lot, right? That means there is some importance to uh, releasing. There's some importance to focusing on letting go. So expose the feel and do not suppress. But how do we expose the feel? There have to be a few techniques that are safe. Like for example, I always tell people, whenever you are indulging in this act of exposing and letting go the steam or whatever, try and make it as private as against public as is possible. 
I mean, public, yes, we know some people because they're so stressed and so full of some anger or whatever, they just go and burst it all out on other people. So they became free from whatever was inside of them, but they spilt it on to other people who are around them. But you can choose to make it a public if you have picked a mentor to speak with, a guru, or maybe a close friend who has the ability to uplift you. Again, be careful who you choose to expose it to. Because there are some people who we call, today we call them vampires, the energy vampires. You are talking about, oh, I'm so angry with this person. I'm so upset that somebody so and so behaved like this or spoke to me like this. And that person can keep adding fuel to it by saying, of course, it's understandable. You should be feeling like that. So what they do is they just make that even more uh, magnified. So be careful who you expose it to. But there are so many other ways. There are tons and tons of ways that people talk about these days, how they express themselves and just release. So I would like you all to, again, unmute or chat and tell me what are some ways which you feel are good, effective ways of releasing the steam and letting go. Anybody, feel free to share either through chat or unmute yourself. Share what do you do usually if you feel that there is some sort of a pent up steam or there is a pent up anger. So I don't hear anybody say anything. So maybe I'll share something I had read about recently. For me, I communicate, sorry. Go ahead, communicate. Communicate with whom? Communicate either with the person with for whom I'm holding on to certain emotions. Okay. Or share it with someone who is near and dear to me who would probably empathize with me and understand me. That's good. But tell me something, uh, Patho. If you communicate with the person uh, with whom the whole disturbance is all about, does it always go in the right direction or sometimes it doesn't go the way you want it to? Uh, sometimes it definitely does not go. Uh, it right. tends to go to a negative, uh, you know, downward spiral. Okay. However, I mean, it's the way in which I communicate with him or her is very important. Yes, yes, absolutely. I agree with you. The manner in which you present it to the person, absolutely. Very good. Awesome. I agree with you. Even I always believe in, you know, face the person, talk it out. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but many a times it does. Is there any other way anybody can add to that and say any other way? I don't know whether uh, what I'm about to tell you is uh, the solution or it works, but um, uh, of course I've not been able to do that in COVID times. I would go for a swim you know, and release all the pent up anger, swim for an hour or so, or I would go and play tennis, which again, I have not been able to do for some time now. Right. But that would help. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. That's amazing. Yeah, I mean, in fact, even I like to take a walk. Just take a walk, maybe put some music or just be with my thoughts and take it out. There's another very uh, well-researched and, uh, you know, there's a process of writing your emotions or writing your thoughts down in a piece of paper. We hear this activity quite a bit, right? But there is a supporting science to the whole thing that when you're writing on a piece of paper and you're thinking something, you're actually transmitting those emotions into the paper. And that's why uh, they say that write it down, or maybe crumple it up, throw it away, and tear it up, or just burn it safely. So these are some ways, and there are quite a few other ways. Some people believe that they want to take a, a pillow or something and you know, just hit the pillow and take the steam off. Some people believe in just going to a quiet place and just screaming their gut out. There could be so many ways of doing it, but it's very important. It is not okay for people to say, oh no, I'm okay, you're okay. This, you're okay, I'm okay is good for the outside world, but it can impact our inner world. So we got to take care that we don't suppress it, whatever the resentment may be. But here is what is very beautiful. You allow peace to flow in by focusing on breathing. Our breathing as we know that breath has immense power in it. And through the breath, it allows us to throw out whatever is creating the mess in our inner world. So here's a little process I would like to share with you all. It's very simple, but it's very powerful. If you can just sit very comfortably, carefully somewhere where nobody is going to disturb you or distract you and close your eyes, gather all your attention to whatever the corresponding emotion you have around that episode or around that person, whoever has hurt you, upset you or whatever it may be, just bring your full attention to that 
and start taking deep breaths in and out. So every time you're taking a breath in, you are thinking about that whole collection of emotions, the negative feelings or hurt or whatever you're feeling about it. And as you're breathing out, just feel that the, all those emotions are releasing you through the breath. So you're just breathing it out back into the universe, into the system, out of your body. However, let me tell you, this is not a one-time thing to do and look for uh, you know, some, like Ashish mentioned earlier, you got to try it out for yourself, try it, be consistently regular with something, and then see the, the result. So whether you're writing it down, or whether you are uh, breathing, or whatever you're doing, you got to do it a little more regularly. So there is a mentor of mine who had posted on Facebook sometime back, and it stuck with me. And this uh, reminds me of that. He says, things are not quite adding up in your life. Look to start subtracting what is extra and what can be released and make way for things to you know, happen the right way. So it's a very beautiful thing of allowing peace to flow. And that's why I have to remove all the extra kachrapati. Everything has to go away so that I can make place for that peace, which right at the beginning we saw because we deserve the peace, right? Now, moving on, this is my very favorite slide because it talks about commit to let go. The key word being commit. Commitment means doing something regularly. Commitment means bringing your entire focus and attention onto something. Commitment means being regular with something. Because if we keep doing something regularly, repeatedly, we not only become good at it, it becomes a habit. Whatever it may be, it may be something good, it may be something bad, but whatever we practice, we become good at it. So be committed to letting go. You And also put it down on a to-do list. I don't know how many of you have this habit that first thing in the morning before you begin your day, you create a blueprint of the day. You put down, okay, today I have to do this, 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 and that. I have to attend to all these things. In that list, you could put down, like Ashish spoke about gratitude, there could be a list for gratitude, to be grateful every day I'm practicing gratitude. Likewise, every day I could commit to saying sorry or to releasing the resentment I could be holding against somebody. So committing to letting go only brings us to become free from the position of being a victim. Because if we keep saying that somebody's behavior, somebody's words, somebody's actions has caused pain or resentment or hurt in me, that means I'm being a victim. So you can release yourself and become free from the position of being a victim. This is another very beautiful and powerful and empowering thought. Recognize that you have a choice. At every point of anything happening in our lives, we are never a full-on victim. Like, you know, I have no control over it. I have no choice. There is a choice. Now, since we are talking about forgiveness and we are talking about resentment, we are talking about somebody, some behavior or action or whatever, which has hurt us or angered us or whatever, what do you think would be a choice that we could make? Either we judge the person or the situation, or we understand it. Now, judging is a shortcut. We look at something, take the face value, bam, just pass your judgment, done. But understanding, on the other hand, it requires for us to excavate through the situation, through the person, and get deeper into what is going on. Now, again, I, I don't know if I'm taking up too much time here, but I would like to share this little incident. I think majority of the people here may have read this book by Stephen Covey, um, The Seven Habits of uh, Highly Effective People. And in that book, there was a little story under the chapter of Paradigm Shift, which has stuck with me till now. Uh, there is, it's the scenario of a particular compartment of a daily commuting train. And uh, so uh, two people are sitting and chatting. Somebody has got the Walkman listening to music. Somebody's looking out of the window. One person is reading a, a newspaper. So it's a very peaceful scenario. One person gets off, somebody gets in. Up until it came to a station where a young guy, he walked into the compartment with three very small children. So as soon as he got in, he found himself a seat. He put his head back and closed his eyes. But the three little kids, they were like brats. They were all over the place, running around, tugging at somebody's newspaper, falling on somebody. So they went on disrupting all this, but the father was sitting with his eyes closed, completely oblivious to what's going on. So an old lady who was sitting there, she could take it no longer. And she woke up the father and said, excuse me, sir, I don't think your children know how much they're disturbing everybody around. 
So the guy just got up and he said, yes, ma'am, you're right. My children really don't know what they're doing because we are coming back from the funeral of their mother. So that is, that is what I mean by understanding. Do we know what is going on in somebody's life? We don't. And that I don't know is the powerful line to go with. I don't know everything about everybody. And it is important to understand that everyone around us is behaving according to their personal reality. And no two personal realities can be identical. Even for two identical twins born in the same family to the same parents, brought up by the same set of parents, they won't have identical personal reality. So we got to embrace this thought that everybody is doing the best they can from where they are. Just because I don't approve of something and I can say that, no, I would have never behaved like that. I would have never done something like this. I don't know how this person is speaking like this. I would never do this. True, you would not do that, what somebody else is doing because your personal realities are different. And personal reality is a very broad thing to talk about. There's so many things that go into your personal reality, not just your surroundings, it's your DNA, it's your upbringing, it's the culture scape around you, it's your peers, so many things build your personal reality. So we do have a choice here to make. Do we want to judge, do the shortcut, or can we, do we have the ability to dig a little deeper and understand? Now that brings me to focus on now, which of course we all, all know, the power of now is always talked about so much, but pause and think right now where you are, whatever you have achieved, whoever you have become connected. Now, all of you had, a, I'd asked you to think of a person that you need to forgive or you have not forgotten what they have done. Now, whatever that episode was, whatever that person did, could they come in the way or completely stunt you from getting where you are today? You still are where you are right now. And what I'm trying to to say is that they do not have the ultimate overall power over you. And the moment you see less importance or less power to something, it becomes a little more easier to release and let go. That's the only idea of getting our attention to this fact that they cannot really have so much power over everything. And the power of now is very beautiful because every single moment is fresh and new. It's absolutely fresh and accurate. I just click my fingers this moment. Now it's become a past. This is my present. This is my present. As you keep clicking or clapping, you see this is your current moment. So every moment is fresh and new. So instead of uh, pinning our present to something that has happened in the past and living out of that, what we could do is we could make the present our baseline. This moment is fresh and new. Let me start from here. Let me not pin it to something. And, you know, this is a lot like it reminds me of a jigsaw puzzle. Our life is pretty much like that. So many little, 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 little pieces come together. They connect with each other to create the big picture in a jigsaw puzzle, right? And if one piece is a little broken or it's like peeled off or whatever, it kind of messes up the picture. So it's pretty much like that in our life. Every moment is fresh and new and every moment is very, very important to us. So don't, don't pin your present to anything in the past. Now, anybody has anything to add to uh, whatever we've discussed so far before we get into the little science behind forgiving and how all that works? Are there any comments? Are there anything anybody wants to share here? Yeah, Amrita, Partho here once again. I just yes, I believe in one thing very strongly mm -hmm. that uh, I would not have reached where I am if people, many people would not have forgiven me for the many mistakes that I had made. Absolutely so beautiful. Gratitude for that. And I think it's up. Uh, I read it somewhere and then I practice it and I believe it. And it gives me a lot of serenity and peace within. Absolutely beautiful. Yes. And apart from that brings me to another point connected with that, that when people uh, treat us wrong or bad or whatever we call it. And through that, there is a lot of learning. I think that is also something that pushes us forward because there's so much life. Everything was going smooth. Everybody is behaving exactly the way I expect them to. Everybody is treating me exactly the way I expect them to. Then it's like a flat line and flat line is death, right? The life has to be like up and down. There has to be curves in the line. There has to be some hiccups where somebody treats me not the way I expect. To. What is in it for me to learn from there? So thank you so much for bringing it up. Yes. It might be wrong for me. 
the way he's treating me, but it might be right for the other person. Exactly, exactly. And we will come to that as well. Absolutely. That's a beautiful thing you brought up. It could be right for, like I said, everybody has their own personal experience where they're coming from. And for that person, he or she is doing the best he or she can or what she or he can do at that point, right? So that's a very, very, very powerful thing you brought up, Arthur. Thank you so much. So that now- Yeah, I have, see- yeah one, uh, ma'am, one observation. Mm-hmm. Now, in the presently, we're talking a lot about FOMO, fear of missing out. Now, that is actually a contradiction to the focus on the now, right? Yes, fear of missing. The fear will come only when you have lack of focus. When you have the uh, presence of focus, you are in the now. So when you have something, okay. you, you're not in a fearful state. You are already with it. You okay. are in abundance of that moment. So being in the now, focus and fear, they cannot live together. When you're focused, when you're focused on the moment, there is no fear of losing it. Because when you're in the moment, you are and being in the moment doesn't mean that I'm just present here physically. Right. It also means that my attention is here because wherever your attention goes, energy flows. We all know that. That's a law. Wherever yeah. your attention goes, energy flows. So if your attention is here right now to everything that's happening to you mindfully, you are in charge of the moment. And when you are in charge of something, there is no fear. There is no room for fear at all, right? Right. So uh, so to have this continuously, is there any mantra <laughs> to be uh, focused on the now? <laughs> That's a brilliant question to have it. That's a very good question to bring up. How can I consistently be in this place? And that is where we need to instill daily rituals, daily habits. One of the daily habits for uh, instilling being in the now, when I talked about the breathing, you can use the just sitting and observing your breath in and breath out. And I think Ashish, uh, in in his sessions of mindfulness uh, meditation, you can learn more about it. But Breathing in and breathing out, just focusing because your breath is always in the moment. Okay. You never say that, you know, tomorrow is going to be such a busy day for me. I will not get any time to breathe. Let me finish breathing today. Your breath is always with you. So if you consciously couple yourself with your breath and be more and more with your breath, especially when you know that some sort of a disturbance or something is just coming up, it's, it's just about to happen in me. Take your attention to your breath. And that's why more often than not, you would see that whenever somebody is going through something or somebody's hurt, people say, breathe, breathe, breathe heavy. So connect yourself to breathing. Connect okay. yourself to a practice of meditation. If you meditation more and more and more, very easily and effortlessly, it becomes possible to be in the moment more often than not. And there, okay. are, there, are, there are tons of other, uh, you know, such regular practice and tools that I usually present in my, my, my sessions as toolkits. There are a lot of regular practice, but it has to be regular. It has to be a routine to make it a habit. Amrita, also when routines becomes rituals, yes, then I think it works better. Absolutely. Very powerful. Very powerful. Every powerful, successful person in the world there are many things that are common to them, but this is one of the things you'll find is common to them. They all have installed some very powerful rituals that are aligned to whatever their goals are, wherever you want to be. I want to be peaceful. I want to be happy. Are my habits, my daily habits aligned to that peace? That is what ritual is all about, building a collection of everyday rituals and routines that takes me closer and closer to the goal that I want to achieve. So that's absolutely I just Absolutely want to share one more thing, Amrita, which uh, I was going through, mm-hmm. is that while to-do lists are very important, I think now and then to-be lists are also very important. Say that again for me, Patra. While to-do lists are important, to-be yes. lists are also very important. To be. Absolutely. Just like, okay, I love that. I'll paraphrase that. Patra is saying that just like we need to have a to-do list, We should also have a to-be list. How do I want to be? And this can be incorporated first thing in the morning. Set the tone. How do I want to be in the world when I set out there? I don't know what is going to come and hit me. I have no idea what's going to happen, how people are going to behave. How do I want to be in the middle of all those happenings? They could be good. They could be bad. They could be ugly, whatever they are. That's a brilliant thing you brought up, Patha. Thank you so much. A to-be list is equally important, amazing. So that moves me, it takes me to the next uh, point about the science part of forgiving. 
what is the science behind forgiving? Now, the slide tells you it transform the exchange of energy. What does that even mean? And we all know that we all have, we are all vibrational beings. We all have an electromagnetic field around us. And we also know that energy can neither be created nor destroyed, as says the law of conservation of energy. It can only be transformed. Now, whatever we are thinking, whatever we are speaking, it creates a vibration. So whatever the, the way I'm thinking, the way I'm speaking, it will decide if I'm vibrating at a higher frequency, if I'm creating positive and uplifting uh, thoughts, or if I'm creating negative thoughts and disturbing thoughts, then that means I'm vibrating at a lower frequency. So all this is going on all through the day. Not all the time we are vibrating at a higher frequency. Not all the time we are vibrating at a lower frequency. But the fact remains that we all have an energy field. And whenever there is a relationship or interaction between any two people in any relation, in any aspect of life, there is always an exchange of energy taking taking place, not only through your words, not just through communication, but also through your thoughts. So here, just to make this clear, I just want to share a personal experience of mine, which was almost life changing and magical for me. I had this situation very recently where a couple of my colleagues at work from my department, from day one of my joining uh, that, that place, they were very rude, very brusque, to the extent that even if I wished them good morning, they won't even wish back. To that extent. And I was not the only one they were uh, treating like that. There were a few others. So it seemed like it was their, their trait to be that way. But it was very really disturbing. But me being me, I, I would still outwardly, I'll still be polite with them. I'll still be respectful with them. And I won't show that, you know, I'm. but in my mind, I was creating thoughts of what's wrong with these people? What have I even done to them? Why are they being so nasty? And, you know, these thoughts would keep coming up. That's the time I came across a lot of stuff about, I started doing research on the energy field and how to transform energy. So as an experiment, I took it up that for a few days, instead of creating thoughts of thinking what's wrong with these people or whatever, whatever, I'm going to replace those thoughts, the thoughts of forgiving them for whichever way they're treating me and behaving with me. So I'm going to just forgive them. So what I did consciously for a few days, Every time I thought of something, I would either forgive them or I would also create some loving thoughts towards them. Now, was that easy? No. Initially, it was because every day I'm meeting with them, every day I'm experiencing that whole nasty behavior that they were throwing at me. I am in the vicinity of all that happening, but I had taken it up as an experiment. So I thought, no, come what me, I'm still going to keep changing my thoughts. When I'm driving back any other time, I will consciously send them my forgiveness and I will consciously send them loving thoughts. I would visualize them. There were two of them. I would visualize them looking very happy and content, basically passing on my uh, well-wishing to them. Believe it or not, day seven or eight of my experiment, first of all, I got a good morning back. That itself was like, oh my God, what happened? After two years of not getting a good morning back, I got a good morning back. Within 10, 15 days, they started indulging in conversations with me when I was around them. Earlier, they would not even speak to me if I was anywhere around them, only whatever I needed to, you know, ask them. And that too, I would have to ask them two, three times before they would even acknowledge my presence. That was the level of, you know, bad treatment I was receiving from them. But to cut a long story short, when I continued, because I saw it working, I got excited. I said, let me extend my experiment and see what happens. And when I continued doing that, by the end of a year and a half, when this particular person, she was the head of her department and she was leaving uh, and going away somewhere else, she actually offered her position to me. And by which time, and even till date, I have left US and I have come back and these people, they still keep in touch with me, so loving. Now, what actually was amazing for me is that outwardly, outside of me, I did not change one thing at all. The only thing that I changed was my thought and the vibration of my thought. And that itself was powerful enough to transform the energy exchange between me and them. So this is a very, very powerful science. And then I'm again going to bring up what Ashi shared with you earlier. There's somebody who needs to uh, mute their... Please mute yourself if you haven't already. 
Okay, this is this is something Ashish brought up earlier, right? He brought up this Hawkins scale, which had all the emotions listed on one side. And he talked about how when you're feeling all this shame and guilt and apathy, grief, and all these bring about contraction in our emotions. And when we are in a space of love and peace and joy, it expands our emotions, right? So obviously none of us want to live in that contracted place. Now here is the good news. When you indulge in forgiveness, it has the power to move us from the contracted to the expanded level of energy. More often than not, it can just catapult you to that place immediately. And who here doesn't want to live from an expanded space? Who here doesn't want love, peace, and joy? This is something we all want. But the whole idea is let's start to dilute the importance and intensity of any episode, the more we dilute it, and like somebody brought up, like we need to, there should be a practice, there has to be a ritual, there has to be a routine. And over a period of time, whoever you had in your mind, at, right at the beginning of this uh, session, just do that experiment with that person. Maybe you would stop feeling anything about it. Like I said, right at the beginning, it's not about forgetting about the incident. It's not about approving what had happened, but just shifting your relationship with that episode or with that person, how it can come to a point where the same thought of that episode, the memory of that person is not going to generate any pain in you. It's not going to generate any anger or resentment, whatever you all had listed out, right? There were a few things that you feel when you hold on. When you realize that your relationship with that person or that event is devoid of all those uh, disturbances within, then you know that you have set yourself free. Now, feeling compassion, everybody here has experienced it. Everybody here knows what it is to be compassionate. But what I'm talking about is, you know, it's so easy to feel compassion when we come across somebody who's either physically weak or physically injured or physically ill. It is so easy to feel compassion towards them. But we need to understand the same happens to some people's minds, some people's emotions. Some people have weaker emotions. The emotions may be hurt by their, we talked about the personal reality. Their personal reality may have kind of, uh, you know, messed up their emotional stamina. It could be that they are mentally going through a lot and that is bringing their emotional quotient down. So feel compassion just the way we are able to feel compassionate towards anybody who has physical weakness or physical trouble. Let's see if we can find in ourselves to make compassion unconditional. We see somebody poor, we see somebody going through something, we see someone needing love. You're so, it's so easy for us to shower love on them. But when somebody is behaving nasty with us, that person also needs love. It's because that person has something disturbing. Only a disturbed person can go and trouble other people. Somebody who's at harmony and calm and at peace and happy, they never go around uh -huh. troubling other people. So to just to keep that in mind that whatever that person is going through, is, is tough. So what if I choose love over pain? I choose love over resentment. I choose love over hurt. I choose love over anger. Because here is something beautiful I got from my guru, Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, who taught me that love is not an emotion. Love is our very nature. We are made up of love. There's so much love in us. Let's not keep it in a safe deposit. Let's just go around and freely distributing it to people. Now, that's, that's all I wanted to say. And lastly, I have to point out that uh, how important forgiveness is to our heart, to our whole body, of course, but to the heart. Because research has shown that people with cardiac uh, issues, they have been able to resolve that when they indulged in a conscious process of letting go and forgiving and releasing the resentment. And if you, any one of you haven't already, if you get a chance, you must either read the book or listen to the TED Talk by Anita Mojani. It's called Dying to Be Me. And she talks because she was declared dead by the doctors. She was suffering from cancer. Her soul left her body and the experience that she had, with that she was sent back into the body just to pass on this message to the world that cancer was created in her body from the resentments that she had been holding for a while. 
And today, a lot of research is being done. Of course, there are products that have become carcinogenic. There's no debate or doubt about that. But we need to be aware of the fact that the more we hold on to, the more resentment there is, the more ailment is created in the body. And today, cancer is coming up as one of the number one disease created by resentment. So let's, I just hope that, you know, today's session uh, was helpful in any way, just like Ashish asked for thumbs up and smiley. If you got something out of it, send it my way or just uh, ask, ask any questions. If anybody has anything to share or any question, I'll be happy to answer them. So yeah, that was my final message to everybody. Become free and uplift the quality of your life. That's all we want. Everything we do is to uplift and optimize the quality of our lives. Why not? So I hope you took something out of today's session of uh, how we can, you know, make our life a lot more magical than it already is right now. Excellent session, Amrita. Compliments to you. I think it was very, very good. Thank you so much, Atul. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. So just let me know if it was, what I'm gonna do is I'm quickly gonna share uh, a link and we would really appreciate if you could uh, just click on that link and for, fill out this uh, evaluation form. And it's a very short thing, just lets us know what you like, what you would want in future. Okay. All right, do you see, do you see the link Ashish? Uh, not yet, Amrita. Um, no. Uh, just wanted to know the name of the book you mentioned, Amrita, just now. Dying to Be Me by Anita Murjani. Amita, A M I. Anita, Anita, A N I T A, Anita Murjani. Thank you so much. Anita well, the is there. So, uh, friends, request you to take out 30 seconds. It won't take you more than 30 seconds to give us this feedback. <clears throat> And then we will open up the session to Q and A. Uh, Amrita, there is a question from Piyashi, uh, which is: Does forgiving someone passes positive energy to that person? Of course, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. From you, definitely from you, the person's quota of positive energy. Certainly, you are the source of it. And it, that brings me to that question. Brings me to how you can even bless people around you, not necessarily because uh, you're holding on to something against them, not because there is something to forgive. Even if somebody is going through something that you are feeling bad about, you're thinking uh, or lovingly towards that or you're thinking positively towards that passes that energy to them. This transformation of energy, exchange of energy applies no matter what between any two people in any relationship. Uh, uh, friends, some of you have joined us for the first time and uh, Manas has shared the links to social media of Mindful Living. So you can stay connected with us on Facebook, LinkedIn and YouTube for further updates. Thank you, Piyashi. Thank you, Vin. Are there any questions? Any comments? Thank you, Shashank. Thank you. So, uh, Amrita, this is a question I struggled with, uh, you know, and I would like to ask uh, for the benefit of maybe uh, um, everyone. Uh, you know, for a long period of time in my life, I felt that I have not done anything wrong. So why should I seek uh, forgiveness from people, you know? So well, what's your take on that, you know? Uh, uh, you know, <laughs> when you maybe unconsciously making errors, we all make errors because we are human. Uh, but we do consciously feel I have not done any wrong. And then, uh, you know, we are having our life go round and round like a jalebi. And we don't know how to come out of it. But we won't say thank you. We won't say sorry. So, uh, Ashish, you, you've asked a question that opens up another session of a couple of hours at least. <laughs> but I will, I will try and answer that. That uh, You're saying that if I haven't made a mistake, but I'm still like you talked about Ho'oponopono. In Ho'oponopono, not only are you thanking and expressing gratitude, you're also asking for forgiveness. Now, this has a little connection, if I may take a little more time, it has a little connection with uh, something that could be a, a relationship of you and somebody else, not only in, in this body, not only in this clothing, 
but it could have been something from the past which we are not familiar with. A lot of people talk about regression therapy and stuff like that, where you visit your past life and you see what happened. Now say today, you and I, we are friends, uh, and today, God forbid, just a hypothetical situation, you and I have a fight. And I get very upset with you and I, I'm holding all these emotions that Ashish is so unfair, he shouldn't have done this or whatever, whatever, whatever. And then uh, suddenly, you know, say I die. That was my last breath on this planet. Now, when my the soul, which was feeling like, you know, Ashish was so wrong to me, that comes face to face with Ashish, maybe in, maybe in another birth, in another costume, in another uh, form where he's not Ashish, maybe somebody else, there is still a sense of resentment that is there, which I don't know where it's coming from. Because in this, in this birth, in this life, Ashish and I, or whatever our names are, we're getting along fine. But there's something inside which just doesn't feel good when I come face to face with Ashish. There's something that's coming from there. So likewise, maybe I have not forgiven somebody or I have not asked for forgiveness. I may have wronged someone and never got a chance to ask for forgiveness. It could be something still stuck in my consciousness. When we go deeper into meditation, there's a lot of, uh, you know, talk about how meditation allows you to go into all those folders in your consciousness, which has many files that are recorded in there. And as you keep meditating, as you keep saying thank you, as you keep saying sorry, when you you go through these processes you're just clicking open those files and deleting click open delete so you're clearing up the mess from uh, maybe something that is stuck in your consciousness this is the shortest i've ever explained this i don't know if it made sense or not because there's yeah. so much more to it but when you uh, give forgiveness to somebody there is a reason there's not a reason it's another way of freeing yourself it's another way of just releasing emotions and another question I would like to ask Amrita is, there is another one from Piyashi also, but before that, uh, you know, sometimes I may not feel up. So suppose I am the boss and I know I have done wrong to my junior uh, and I need to seek forgiveness from my junior, but I, am, I have an authority position and I don't feel like going and consciously or saying sorry to him uh, in person. So is it still okay if I say, uh, sorry, X, Y, Z, I did wrong to you and please forgive me. You know, I may not say it mm -hmm. on the face, but I just send that for, I, you know, seeking forgiveness without coming face to face with them. Yeah, but see, that is the beauty of understanding how the whole law of transformation of energy works, where outwardly, if you don't feel comfortable, don't do it. You don't have to like my story. I didn't have to outwardly go and confront them and ask them, what have I done to you? Why do you guys behave like this? But I had to do no such uh, stuff that would have been very uncomfortable or awkward. But all you can do is just do it from within. And they won't even realize, like these people, I don't think they still know that I created those thoughts of forgiveness or whatever. It's just that our relationship just transformed into something else, literally from one end to the other. So no need. If you're a boss, and you don't have to go and say to people's faces. You just have to create the right thoughts in your mind and make sure that when the other thoughts, the opposing thoughts, where you are expressing your displeasure or whatever, you're replacing those thoughts. You're replacing again and again. If it come up for some reason or the other, just consciously replace with thoughts of gratitude or thoughts of forgiveness or whatever. And over a period of time through the exchange of energy, you will see that there is a change in that person. You don't have to necessarily go and say sorry. If you can, well and good. If you can't, it's still fine. Use your energy. And thanks for sharing that, Amrita. I'm sure yeah. that will help many people. There is a question from Piyashi. Which, uh, she's asking, does feeling guilty possess any energy in that person's body? Yes, absolutely. Very good question, uh, Piyashi, because every emotion in us, like I just talked about it, whether it's negative, positive, whatever it is, it has a corresponding vibration to it. And that vibration is not only felt by people on the outside in my electromagnetic field, the vibration is first felt by me. So if there is a sense of guilt stuck somewhere, not that I'm feeling guilty every walking moment and waking moment of my life, not like that, but then it ha it's lodged somewhere inside. And in you know all these negative emotions, they create like a collateral damage, if I can call it. In every aspect of your life, they will find its way and become like an obstacle somewhere. So it is, it is very important that we address it, like, okay, if I have a feeling of guilt, release it. Find a way to, again, breathing. To everything, I will come back to the answer, breathing. If you're feeling a feel of guilt, 
breathe it out just breathe it out just breathe it out but do it regularly up until you feel you're feeling lighter that was yes, very sir. well explained amrita uh, there are a lot of people and i'm sure you have questions anil sir kavna rupa uh, ruchi uh, i have one question yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, Ma'am, uh, I don't know. A couple of days before, I saw a video from uh, Mr. Ashish. No, on um, that uh, one person, how the sound, how the sound is actually, you know, making that uh, thing as amazing video. In fact, after that, I I used to do the chanting earlier, and I left it. Now, typically, we don't uh, know do anything consistently. Now, that uh, that video is mind-boggling. How it actually, you know, uh, 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 contracts and everything, the energy, and then keeps it a form. And uh, coming back to your thing, which you was talking about, your uh, No, uh, hope no, no, whatever, whatever it is. Yeah, I've been hearing this lot of Western uh, philosophies of late, very powerful. You no, know, uh, Louis Hay, hope no, yes. all this thing. Now, and interestingly, our own ancient uh, Hindu, uh, uh, no, this home, all these things uh, left behind the curtain for uh, various maybe uh, people think is religious something. I just want your comments on that. Oh yeah, but you know something, I agree with you. Uh, yes, a lot of people are. You, Louis say is of course my personal uh, mentor as well. But the power of Om, the A U M sound yes. coming together and creating Om, yeah. it's really catching. In fact, I have a tattoo that I sport. Wow, that says Om. <laughs> and uh, when I got the tattoo, all the people at the workplace, I was in the in America, and people there didn't know what it meant. And I got right. the opportunity to really talk to them about. the power in the sound of the resonance that it right. creates when because uh, it is said that the earth going around the sun right. when right. it's rotating and revolving it creates a resonance right. and that resonance is the sound that sounds like om so a u m a t i a alphabets yeah. which you find in every religion whether they say amen yes. or amen or shalom so these three words coming together so today a lot of because people are also talking about uh, water memory and our body is made up of uh, 70% water right ashish 70% water in our body so water contains memory and water has the ability to respond to sound whatever is being said to our body whatever sound you are exposing your body to so yes chanting and soothing music and uh, you know listening to anything that's positive even listening to positive words all this would have a very very powerful impact on ourselves so sound and uh, sound is a very uh, interesting topic and yeah and ashish is going to talk about it i believe uh, next week so in the coming session that's yes. going to be at 12 o'clock on 7th of november so we will be sending out information for that shortly but please block your calendars for 12 noon on 7th november it's an awesome session 90 minutes yes any other questions anything anybody wants to share or do we just leave the session with this uh, maybe a commitment to ourselves that we will consciously practice gratitude and forgiveness not because ashish and amrita spoke about it because like we said right at the beginning i deserve peace i deserve harmony in my life so i will do this i'll be committed to myself to bring that peace into my life and i am the boss because it's all with our thoughts thank you shashank <laughs> and friends if you uh, uh, thanks suresh we have put out the, the links again uh, the mindful living facebook uh, uh, linkedin and youtube links so in case you would like to stay connected with us please do like them uh, please share your feedback and uh, any questions comments that you have Uh, we'll be here for another minute or two, and then we will wrap up the session. Thanks, Partha. Thank you, Partha. Everybody, please make sure you share your feedback. It would mean a lot to us. It would really be uh, good for us to take something from it and you know go forward with it. Thanks. Rupa. Thank you so much, Shashank. Thank you, Rupa. Thank you, Shashank. We appreciate you being here. All right. So I think Ashish, that's about it. Yes. Thanks, everyone, uh, for joining in. and uh, you know making this uh, uh, you know i'm sure you found uh, some value in the session today uh, have a nice weekend i have a great week ahead and look forward to meeting you again next saturday thank you thank you thank, thank you. you everybody thank you ashish thank you amrita thank you, thank you, thank you so, so much, much. thank you ashish yeah. okay